Hello, my name is Michaela Brombari and I'm Professor for Learning and Instruction at the University of Trier in Germany. This video project is about brain-based learning and brain-based living. Please imagine you're sitting at your desk and you're learning, your mind is open, your thoughts are flying, and when you look up in the afternoon, you're very happy what you have accomplished. Huh? How did you get into this state? That's exactly what we are talking about today. How do we create the optimal conditions for the brain to learn? And we will see that these optimal conditions are not only in the learning process itself, but also in the way we lead our lives. So it's about brain-based learning and living, so to speak. Let's take a look at the agenda. Today, at first, I will briefly explain the structure of the brain and the pathway of learning. Then we will focus on the three gatekeepers of consciousness and learning, which the neuroscientist Judy Wallace has mentioned. And then I would like to give some hints on how to step up one's life in a brain-friendly way so that learning is optimally possible. Structure of the brain. The brain can be roughly described anatomically as four brain areas. The telencephalon is the outer part of the brain divided in two hemispheres. The outer the outer layer, the cerebral cortex, is very rich in neurons. In particular, the front part, the prefrontal cortex, is the center of learning. This is where all learning impulses take place. The cerebellum is located just on the opposite side of the head, slightly higher than the neck. It regulates motor function in particular. The diencephalon lies inside the brain and consists especially of the thalamus and hypothalamus. The diencephalon regulates in particular the drives and instincts of survival, hunger, thirst, sleep, and sex drives. Finally, the brain steam includes the midbrain, the bridge pond, and the medulla oblongata. Circulation, breathing, heartbeat, and sleep are regulated here. In addition, we still have an important structure that extends over all parts, expect the cerebellum, and processes emotions. We will see that it therefore has an extremely important function for learning. It's the limbic system with the, with the amygdala and hippocampus. When learning goes really well, the learning impulses from the senses pass through the brainstem, radiate via the limbic system into the cerebellum and di diencephalon, and end up in the prefrontal cortex. However, this does not apply to the majority of the impulses. Our five senses take in billions of sensory stimulus every day. George Markovsky, professor of computer science at the University of Maine, explains that the human body sends about 11 million bits per second to the human brain for processing. Everything we see, hear, feel, taste, and smell. But those 11 million bits per second, Markovsky says, only about 50 bits per second can be processed. Other researchers assume similar discrepancies. But at what side in the brain and based on what criteria is the important information separated from the unimportant so that the important is transmitted to the prefrontal cortex? Neuroscience and teacher Judy Willis describes three gatekeepers of information processing that pay attention that our brains are not overloaded with a vast amount of data. The RIS, the limbic system, and the neurotransmitted dopamine. 
Our entire body is streaked with neural pathways. Sensory nerve impulses are traveled through the brainstream, more specifically through the formatio reticulars, the reticular activating system, RAS. If a nerve impulse are to reach the prefrontal cortex for processing, they must pass through the RAS without this gatekeeper closing first. Here it is. The formatio reticularis is a network of neurons and neuron nuclei that originates from the brainstem via the diencephalon, especially from the thalamus located there, and radiates to all parts of the cerebral cortex. The formatio reticularis includes a group of neuronal nuclei that transport serotonin, for example, such as the so-called rougher nuclei. Others transport acetylcholine, adrenaline, GABA, or dopamine, thus provide with all this for the alertness of the brain, as well as the motivation and the memory functions, as the neuroscientist Dora Rigrodi explains. According to this, the RAS is a tremendously important attentional filter for alertness and learning, if it does not close itself. Because everything that seems monotonous, unimportant, even boring, closes the RAS gate. So the unimportant is sorted out to let the essential through, to raise the arousal level and awake the mind. If the RAS shows a strong frequency that is an important, strong stimulus, consciousness gate of the thalamus is open. Strong stimuli cross direct wakefulness and alertness, for example, consciousness. Activity in the entire cortex is increased, which puts the mind and the body in a vital state. And this state is the basic condition for processing information, for learning. Limbic system. Once information has successfully passed through the RS and the thalamus, it is tested for emotional relevance before possibly being allowed to enter the cortex. Specifically, the amygdala and the hippocampus evaluate, as Willis explains, whether this information is useful because it helps you survive physically or gives you pleasure. The amygdala is a little marvel, an almond-shaped structure in the temporal lobes of the brain with multiple nuclei that stimulate us emotionally and motivationally, regulating attraction, approach, fear, and stress. Monkeys that had their amygdala removed no longer showed interest in anything or fear of anything. They had become soul-blinded, as Heinrich Klüver and Paul Bulls called it. And here it is. This is the amygdala. Negative emotions put a strain on the amygdala. In fear, anxiety, or boredom, it runs at full speed, and the stress clothed the pathway through the RS and the limbic system and blocks the transmission of the prefrontal cortex, the learning center of the brain. Dopamine, the amygdala, does it all by stimulating the release of specific neurotransmitter and hormones. Neurotransmitters are biochemical messages produced by the body itself that connect neurons via the synaptic cleft, building bridges from one neuron to another. For example, adrenaline, serotonin, or dopamine. Dopamine is considered the wonder drug Hell. Dopamine fires activating signals and stimulates the, our behavior. It's the motivational locomotive, so to speak. Dopamine makes us do the things that are likely to make us happy. So dopamine triggers anticipation and flows to large parts of the brain, activating the brain. However, this is only possible if we are neither stressed nor bored, anxious or sad. In other words, 
if we are in a rather good mood overall, because otherwise other neurotransmitters flow into the system, not the cleft, and the pathways are already closed in the RIS and in the limbic system. So brain-based learning and living. Now what the question is how we use the findings of neuroscientific research to get optimal conditions for our teaching and learning. But first of all, avoid stress. The RRS, the limbic system, particularly the amygdala and dopamine production responses to stress. In experiments with rats, the two psychologists, Robert Jerks and John Dodds, in early 1908, found an important link between learning performance and the level of arousal. With increasing arousal dopamine, the performance level grows. And from the peak of the invert U curve, the performance level tilts again because the tension becomes too strong and leads into stress, anxiety, and finally panic. On the other side of the U function, we find the opposite state. Instead of overload, we find boredom and underload. What is exciting is that the brain reacts in similar ways. As we saw with the eyes, the first gatekeeper shuts up, shuts out all boring stimuli. The RRS seems to respond especially to interesting new stimuli according it is a matter of to avoid stress during learning and to replace boring content with interesting stimuli. An open RS and a relaxed limbic system are promoted by positive relaxed emotions during the learning process. Fear, sadness, frustration or boredom lead to the fact that information is either ignored, fought, or avoided. Much more likely to be passed on are positive emotions. Therefore, positive emotions should carry the learning process. Mutual support, hope for progress, cohesion, interest, curiosity, gratitude, caring, connectedness, and all of this. In order to create a stress-free, preferable positive learning atmosphere, learners need a stress-free, preferable positive way of living that meets the needs of the brain, the body, and the soul in equal measure. The following elements contribute to this. First of all, brain-friendly nutrition. Dopamine cannot cross the blood-brain barrier which means we cannot ingest dopamine in a directly usable form, but we can stimulate the dopamine production through food. For example, with turkey meat, eggs, beef, dairy products, such as uh, lignum, lignums, such as peas and humus and such things. Nuts and berries are also healthy brain food. Physical activity. Aerobic activity not only affects the body, but especially the emotions. After only about 10 minutes of aerobic activity, dopamine and endorphins, the body's natural opiates are released. Outdoor activities additionally bring the daylight effect, which also increases dopamine. Slow down. Breathing exercises, mindful exercises, meditation, or brain breaks, micro sleep, or brain naps help the brain to stay in mid arousal, so in balance. And sufficient sleep is very, very important, much more important than we considered the years, uh, 10 years ago. How should the RRS stay open if the person is very tired? The rough nuclear hardly releases any serotonin because they prepare for sleep. Seven to eight hours of continuous deep sleep is the best condition for good learning. So, dear students, summary. The brain needs specific basic conditions to enable the processing of impulses in the prefrontal cortex. For this, the three gatekeepers 
must be optimally supported. The RRS and the brainstem, thalamus and amygdala in the limbic system and dopamine releases in dopaminergic centers. To achieve all this, it helps to have a stress-free lifestyle that is as positive as possible and meets the needs of the brain, body and soul in equal matter. Here are three tips to do just that. Avoid stress while learning, cultivate your positive feelings, and be sure to eat a balanced diet, get adequate sleep, and get aerobic physical activity. All three support a positive mood and the brain ability to learn.